Okay, one of my most requested topics, requested videos. I get asked this literally every post on Instagram, Twitter. I get emails about it. I get asked in person. I've given talks about it. What camera gear do you use? What lens did you use? What did you shoot that with? What kind of camera is that? What did you edit this in? Do you use Lightroom or Photoshop? All these questions, I'm gonna answer right now. First up, I'm a Canon shooter. Always have been, always will be. I don't necessarily think that they're the best camera on the market. Sony make great cameras, Nikon make great cameras. There's lots of great camera companies out there. Hell, your iPhone takes incredible photos. Canon for me just has the most of everything that I like using in cinematography and when it comes to photography. I like the lens selection. I think that Canon glass, their L series lenses, are amongst the nicest types of lenses you can get. I mean, of course there's Carl Zeiss lenses out there. There's the cinema quality lenses. There's some ridiculously expensive glass out there. However, I think Canon's professional series, the L lenses have always for me given me a look that I, I just can't, I can't find anything comparable. I also used to work at a camera shop, which was nice because I got to play with the gear all day. Got to take it home, try it out. If I wanted a new lens, I could order it in, see if I liked it first, use it a little bit. That was super helpful. So I learned a lot about what I liked and what I didn't like. With Canon, I just find I get more of what I like than what, you know, with a different brand, maybe there's something that's missing or this, this other brand might do autofocus extremely well, but I don't like the lens selection or maybe this other brand built-in audio capabilities are phenomenal on this camera. All in all, for me, I shoot Canon. One of the first cameras I bought pro cameras from Canon was the 5D. Saved up for it when I was younger, bought the original 5D, then I bought the 5D Mark II. And then the 5D Mark III, that came out. And takes phenomenal photos, takes phenomenal video. Uh, but the problem with DSLRs for video, and this will, I'll always think this, is they're not 100% made as video cameras. They've got the recording caps on some models. It's sometimes it's hard to get the proper audio inputs. They don't have XLR jacks. They don't have peaking and zebra and all kinds of different features that actual video cameras have. I beat the hell out of this camera. I mean, I don't know, I'll focus here. You can even see I used it so much that even the front grip, look at that. The grip is peeling off the front of this. I use this all the time. It's been in the ocean. It's been hit by bullet cases, Formula One races, to weddings, to all over the world. This camera has literally seen it all. So I will say it's taken an incredible beating and it's not even one of their like high-end pro cameras like what I'm filming on right now. So the fact that the grip is now peeling off, it, it makes sense. I, I'm not easy on this stuff. But that's part of what I think a camera should be capable of. Take daily use, daily abuse. You're sitting it down on the desk, you're picking it up, it's in the car, it's on an airplane, it's sitting it down on the ground, you're moving around with it, you're handing it off, it's getting wet maybe a little bit. You're getting caught in the rain. Like I think a camera should be able to withstand to those elements. So right now, this stays in my camera bag as a backup, second camera at the moment. So what qualifies as an actual video camera? Well, for instance, take the C100, for example. This camera I used for many years. I've probably been shooting with it for the last four years with video. Reason being, it's a legitimate video camera. You wouldn't take this out to actually take stills with, that just wouldn't make sense. It has the proper grip for shooting video that's more comfortable. It has the record button in several different spots depending who's manning the camera or if someone's pulling focus. It has your external mic inputs for XLR or multiple mic jack inputs. Film this way. It's got all your audio settings that just DSLRs just lack in. They don't have. I think because they're primarily meant for photos. Most of the features are photo based, not video based. However, I will say my issue that I had with using the C100 and then having a 5D Mark III and one DX Mark IV, all these different cameras, my problem is I don't wanna bring them all with me. I don't wanna open up a bag and be like, okay, I need to take a photo. I'll use that camera, I need to do some video, I'll do that. I'm more of a run and gun kind of guy. I just wanna grab my camera, shoot what I need to shoot, video, photo, whatever it is, put my camera away, get the shot, move on with my life. I don't wanna be trying to find this piece or where did I put this or the grip isn't attached or where's my 5D battery, it's different from this battery, you know, all the battery chargers that you gotta carry around with you. For me, DSLRs are the way to go because they do excellent video. You can get by with the audio just like what I'm doing right now. Phenomenal for photos. You got everything into one package. For me, that's the way I do it.
One of my favorite lenses that goes everywhere I go, it lives in my camera bag, I use it all the time. It's the Canon 7200 2.8 Image Stabilized Mark II. This lens, in short, is pure magic. The bokeh on this, the image stabilizer on this, it's fast, it's reliable. The stabilizer is honestly ridiculous. It works so well. The color, the compression. You gotta remember too, the longer the focal length you use, the more compression, the more depth of field you're gonna get in the back of your photos. You can get that with a wide lens, but the longer the focal length you get, the more it's gonna compress that background and just look like pure butter. Mm, this lens. I'm telling you, for portraits, for isolating anything like that, it's an all-around good lens. This is money right here. Disclaimer, this thing is heavy as shit, so it definitely weighs down your bag, it weighs down your camera. That is one of the drawbacks of this lens, it's a pain in the ass. I mean, you can take the tripod collar off, this is meant to, if you're gonna shoot wildlife, you're gonna be shooting sports on a monopod or something like that, you can mount this to the to the tripod itself. Because if you were to mount the camera with this heavy lens on it, that's a bad anchor point. You're not gonna get like a good balance. You're gonna wanna mount it by this guy right here. So this is a fun one. 14 millimeter, 2.8 L Mark II rectilinear lens. It means it's really wide, but you're, it's not like a fisheye. So it's not gonna bow or distort the edges. So if I'm shooting landscapes, if I'm shooting architecture or buildings, or I'm in the city and I really want to show wide roads, or I want to show all of a bridge, I'm too close to something, but I need to get further back, but I got no more room to back up. This is the lens that I'm going to use. I'm going to put this on to get wide, epic, beat panoramic shots. My landscape go-to is this. I don't so much do portraits with it because it gets kind of weird when you get up close. Your fingers look like they're nine inches long. So it's a bit, it's a bit weird for that kind of stuff. Some people like it, not so much myself. It doesn't live in my camera bag, I'll tell you that. It stays in the camera bag at home unless I know that I'm gonna need it. Because it's one of those lenses that I only really bust it out when I know I'm going, okay, we're going to shoot the Golden Gate Bridge. We're going to Moraine Lake in Banff National Park. I know I'm gonna be in those places. 100% this is coming with me. But if I'm just going downtown to shoot, meet up with the guys, I'm bringing my camera for some Instagram photos or just to film some quick vlog material or whatever, I don't put this in. Woo! This bad boy right here, I've had this for so long. This is the Canon 100mm macro, not the L version because I actually think this is... Ugh. That doesn't sound good. I think this is just as good. I mean, the other version's stabilized. So if you're thinking macro shots, you're up close, the stabilization would definitely help, but I don't really need it. I'll be honest, like every product photo that I take for different brands and stuff, I use this. I use this so much. It's not my favorite, but oof, man, this thing, like whenever this breaks, it will have done a stellar job. What else do I have in this bag? Road mic. Amazing for vlogging. I'm using a lapel right now just because it's a little cleaner in audio, but if you if you don't want to bother with setting it up and anything like that, get yourself a road mic. Just beware if you saw last vlog. The battery door is a huge bitch taken on and off, so fuck that. I use think tank bags. I got the rollers, I have the backpacks, I have the messenger style bags. I got sponsored by them. Several years ago, I provided them with a bunch of photos they use in their catalog, so they sent me a whole bunch of bags for free. I gave a bunch away. I kept a few. I got three rollers right now and I have this shoulder bag. It's the most natural looking bag. I don't wanna be rolling a suitcase around the city. I don't wanna really roll around the airport. If I gotta bring everything, I'll bring it. But for the most part, I don't want to just advertise that, hey guys, I've got camera gear on me. Blah. Yeah, not my thing. But this nice casual bag does the job. It's called the Urban Disguise. I always keep these little pouches inside my camera bag. Inside them, extra battery, lens cleaners, cables, memory cards, tripod connectors, time-lapse remotes, all that kind of stuff. I could probably do with emptying it, uh, but those little accessory bags, these stay inside my bag. I got another one just for audio gear. Ooh, I also have in this front pouch, ugh, flashlight. Field notes books, I write down my shot lists. I write down what I've shot, what I need to shoot, what I still need to shoot. These are the waterproof, indestructible ones. Boom, batteries. Always have tons of batteries. What camera am I shooting with right now? I am shooting with, I will show you. I'm shooting with this, the Canon 1DX Mark II. It's a beast. 14 to 16 frames per second. It does 4K video, 120 frames per second video. At 1080p, it does 
60p at 4K, it's a beast of a camera. The batteries are amazing. It's robust. It's basically waterproof. I mean, you're not gonna drop it in a pool. Mist, rain, anything like that, it'll handle it. It'll take a beating. So many great customizable features. It's got a built-in grip, vertical, horizontal. It's an animal of a camera. I'm loving it. I'm actually vlogging with it. One downside, it's heavy as shit. What do I edit with? Everyone always asks, do you use Lightroom or Photoshop? And the answer is I use them both. I bring stuff in with Lightroom because I shoot raw. I do my adjustments. Sometimes I do some creative edits within Lightroom, but then I really bring them into Photoshop to, to further tweak things. Because with Photoshop, I have that manipulation ability that I don't feel that I have 100% of in Lightroom. In Photoshop, I can go remove faces and put different faces on. I can fix hair and fix skin and add things to the background. If you guys have seen my plaid chair series, all the special effects that, that I do in those photos, that all happens in Photoshop after the fact. The backgrounds are done in Photoshop. All the, the lights and the fire and whatever's happening. You know, sometimes I even put rain in in Photoshop. So Photoshop really allows me to creatively control elements that weren't in the actual photo to begin with. Now, I will say, you wanna try and capture your photos and your video as close to how you actually want it to look like in camera first. A lot of people are usually like, fuck it, I'll do it in post. And where I've been there, and I've done that too, you wanna try and nail it in camera so you have less processing to do after the fact. Your footage is gonna look better, it's gonna look cleaner, it's not gonna look like you just caked on you know, 19 layers of color correction and it just looks absolutely horrible. So try to nail the shot in camera first. When you get it back to the computer, you'll be so much happier. Okay, I edit my video in Premiere. I used to use Final Cut, never liked Final Cut X, thought it was horrible, still think it's horrible. There's a lot of people that will justify it and, and say, oh, it's come a long way. It's really good now, it's really professional. I wholeheartedly disagree. Even if you're a professional editor, I still think you should be using Premiere. Final Cut X is just like a glorified iMovie. Yes, it might have some features that pro editing software has, but it does not have the capabilities of things like Adobe Premiere. Okay guys, that's where I'm gonna leave it off today. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or wanna discuss things further, comment below. You can subscribe over here and check out the latest vlog in the corner there. I don't know, it's all, it's all around here somewhere. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next time.